I think. I think. Wait, what the fuck? Okay. I think. I think this is working? Question mark? If it's not, I'm gonna kill myself. But not actually. Anyway, that was a really, really bad intro. Um, hi. It's Halloween. I don't care that it's not the 31st, but to me, it's been Halloween since literally July. So in light of all of that, I think it would be really, really fun to kind of ramble and share my ghost experiences and my ghost stories with you guys. Um, honestly, I don't know if it's ghosts, if it's demons, if it's a poltergeist. Um, also, if you just heard that, that was my air, like, freshener. I so- I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna start from the beginning where I think everything really started up. For me, it wasn't in Gettysburg. Like, my sister, I'll link her video in the description because probably don't even need to because you probably came from her video. But, um, I'll link her video in my description. For her, she said it started in Gettysburg, but to me, it's kind of just always been a thing in the back of my mind and around me since really i was like maybe four or five i honestly it's been 11 years so i don't honestly remember when i was like super super little so most of these stories gonna be from like 2020 and forward except this one um there used to be this thing and I think he was attached to me from either a family member or just something in the house that took a liking to me. This is this is my old house, by the way. Um, it used to just tell me to do things. Like, and it would get me into so much trouble and my mom would get so upset with me. And I think it really just fed off of that. Like, hardcore. It used to tell me, like, in the middle of night of the night, get up jump over like the baby gate that my mom put up for me because i didn't want to close my door but she didn't want me like roaming around at night it would tell me to get up jump over the baby gate and walk down the stairs and sit on like the landing of the stairs and i remember i have very very vivid memories of this of when i was little just like sitting on the stairs for i mean like literally hours and just crying uncontrollably because i was terrified and i don't know why i listened to it well i mean i was a kid i was like literally a a baby so that's why and I, i promise you i'm not schizophrenic i've been checked more than once and there's nothing wrong with me besides like obvious things like anxiety but that's an everyone thing so i don't want to hear anyone saying that before i start telling you the rest of these because while me and my family me and my mother and my sister were in gettysburg it was not necessarily a bad experience but it also was not a good experience just because we literally couldn't sleep i remember waking up and trying to see if my sister was awake and I just remember both of us not being able to sleep because we had jaw oh my god just gotten back from a ghost tour literally maybe like three hours beforehand and it was already 12 in the morning probably again i think i was like eight or nine so i don't have the keenest memory when it comes to earlier stories but oh my god i remember the day we were leaving it was either the day, the day we left yeah it was the day we left and my sister told my mom hey my switch isn't in my backpack and my mom was like whatever amelia go upstairs go get it you probably left it in your bed you probably made it into your bed go get it right my sister goes upstairs she gets in the room she comes back and her face is just pale Like, I mean, my sister's already pretty pasty, but she was literally white. All of the blood from her face looked like it was completely drained. And I remember her laughing before she could even get a word out. And we were like, what? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And she shows us 
me and my mother this picture and it's her switch dead in the middle of the closet we are not the type of family to like when we go places put our stuff in the closets or anything just because we're not that type of family there was no reason for anything of ours to be in that closet and mind you the entire the the entire time we were there which was like i think three or four days all of our stuff was going missing and i remember waking up in the middle of the night and i swore that my door like our me and my sister's room's door like opened and closed The day before we left, we went on this, like, guided tour with, like, one of those CDs in your car. And there was, like, a visitor center that you had to get the DVD from. We bought this box of bullets. There was a circular box with one bullet in it. And then there was a picture frame, a glass picture frame with a general called Ulysses S. Grant in it which isn't necessarily good either because i'm pretty sure he was the side that was against the civil rights movement or whatever it was i think i think he was the south side so that was like you know not the best thing and there was a coin in this and two bullets by the way these aren't just like bullets from a modern gun these are bullets pulled off of and taken off of the battlefield where people died this wasn't just like one or two people it was literally thousands and thousands of men and women that died on this battlefield whether they were a soldier uh, on both sides the north or the south or nurses or literal 12 year old boys like drummer boys and stuff literally thousands of people have been killed by these bullets. These bullets have passed through someone, most likely. And my mother, being a skeptic and not really thinking about it, she just bought these. She bought them, and they sat in my room for uh, six years, six or seven years. I was around nine. I'm 16 now. That's I I can't do math, and I'm not going to do math because fuck that. But that's a while. That is a while. There were problems from there on. Um, hey, this is voice recording Sabina. All of the voice recordings I have that I was talking about Gettysburg are corrupted. I- I'll see it if I can find it somewhere, but the voice recording- When I was talking about the rest of Gettysburg and the bullets and, like, how it affected my house and stuff, it's just silence. And I went through uh, the whole hour of me recording, and it's literally just gone. This has happened three times now. So, I'm not gonna piss off whatever's in my house, and I'm just not gonna talk about the bullets, I think. Or I will put it in the description or in the comments or something, because I really don't want to deal with this anyway okay back to your programming there was a point in time during covid where my sister wasn't home at all she was she would stay at her friend's house for honestly like months at a time because of how awful things got in my house like ghost wise Everyone in my house kind of had this negative energy, which makes sense. It was during quarantine. No one was really happy in the world as it is. And then being stuck at home is awful. But um, yeah, she was gone for weeks at a time. So a lot of the really, really scary shit she didn't experience. It was mostly me. Yeah, it, this sounds so like, oh, boo-hoo, me, my sister didn't, whatever. No. I'm happy she wasn't here to experience it because genuinely it fucking traumatized me. It was, I couldn't sleep for days at a time. 
because it was a constant just there's not a word that I could place for how awful this energy this thing was making everyone feel oh my god what the fuck was that but um it was makes me uneasy even thinking about it because i ge- i don't think it was a poltergeist i don't think it was a ghost i genuinely i genuinely think it was a demon because i would i think i have pictures i'll really dig i'll really really dig but um i would wake up with huge scratch marks on my thighs and on my arms and my legs i would have crudely vivid nightmares about just awful things happening and it made me very very angry and very 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 bitter towards literally everyone which caused me to isolate myself from a lot of people oh my god what is going on dude okay it caused me to isolate myself from a lot of people which in turn bit me in the ass and made it a lot worse and it made my mental health a lot worse which i really think it did feed off of and i don't even know how to describe it dude i think that was genuinely the lowest point in my life just because of how i would treat other people as a result you know what i mean um this thing, this is why I don't think it was a poltergeist or a ghost, and I think it was a demon. Um, it things literally used to fly off the shelves. I mean, across the room, heavy objects, not just like an empty water bottle or like a tissue box. It was books, heavy books would fly off the shelves and come at me, or I would hear something fall in my sister's room, and I would go in there to check what it was make sure like nothing broke or anything and everything would be in its place and it i would literally take pictures of my sister's room and when i heard something fall i would go in there take another picture and compare the two pictures and it would be the same again i will see if i still have pictures but it was on my ipod so i don't know if that thing even still works we'll see after I'm done doing this, but I honestly doubt it does, it still works. Um, yeah, it was just, where the fuck did the ponies go? Um, it was, it was a really, really awful experience, and I'm happy that my sister wasn't here to experience it. Oh my god, oh no, I was trying to get to the tornado over there, (laughs) but I'm happy she wasn't here to experience it, and she really only got the tail ends of it, I'm happy that that happened, because if- we probably would have hated each other (laughs) if she was here when that stuff was happening, because I was genuinely fucking awful to be around. Um, yeah, so I- (laughs) it's not funny, but it's funny, but also it's not funny, but it's funny. I'm laughing about it because of how horrendous it sounds, and- when I'm going back and editing this, I'm gonna not want to post it because I'm gonna sound literally like a crazy conspiracy theory lady, but it's okay. We're all a little crazy, I guess. Um, Okay, this literally happened right before I recorded this because first time I recorded this, um, it corrupted, which has never happened before. So I had to record this a second time, and before I recorded it, recorded it a second time, I went into my childhood- Oh my god, what the fuck? Dude, I'm- And I just saw my, my door unlock. Which is really not cute, fun, or fresh, but we're gonna- We move. We move. If you saw it, no you didn't. If you saw it, no you didn't. That's my rule. Oh, this one is genuinely scary because I don't know if it was a person, like a real person, or if it was an entity. Around two weeks ago, my mom and my aunt went on a trip for my aunt's 60th birthday. 
Um, so me and my sister were alone, home alone for, I think it was four or five days. Really not that long compared to other times we've been left home alone. The day before my mom got home, me and my sister were sitting downstairs. We were um, watching a, I think it was, I think it, I think it was Get Out. And we were eating Halloween cookies, you know, like just, we were, we were vibing. We were having a good time. And I think, I think it was around 9 or 10 p.m. And someone knocks on our door. And me and my sister look at each other and we're like, okay, what the fuck? Because it's literally just me and my sister home alone. I call my grandma and she was like, no, you know, I'm getting ready for bed. Like, I don't like your grandpa has been asleep since six. You know, he's old. And I was like, oh, okay. And she was like, why are you guys okay? And I was like, oh, yeah, someone just like knocked on our door. And then as I said that the same person knocked again as far as i know it was the same person they they knocked again um so i call my mom who is three states away at this point i say hey did you guys get home early and she was like no what do you mean i'm leaving tomorrow morning it's a six hour drive back from where we are and i was like oh okay because someone was knocking on the door and she was like, how long ago? And I said around 10, 20 minutes ago. And she was like, it's 10 o'clock at night. Don't answer the door. Can you see outside? And I was like, no, because there's a wreath in front of where like the peephole is. And that's not smart, obviously. And my mom moved our camera from outside to inside. Don't know why, but um, it it would have been really helpful if we had that. My mother is crazy about her lawn like i mean literally insane she got this like dog it's supposed to deter dogs from being on your lawn but it doesn't work we don't have the heart to tell her because she genuinely thinks it it works it plays a really really high pitched sound that i can still hear and it it has different settings and it will just go through those for a good like minute and a half and it happens every single time someone walks in front of it so i was more thinking about it being an actual person so me and my sister go upstairs we turn off all the lights we turn off the tv we make sure it's basically dead silent i go upstairs and i go in my childhood playroom who why the, my childhood playroom looks over the street um so i'm in there i'm trying to see if someone walks away no one walks away but the dog repeller starts going off there is no one there and it starts going off and sure it might have just been a glitch in the device or whatever but how do you explain the knocking that's my thing and it happened the same time that the knocking did it makes it doesn't make any sense to me the scariest story i have is involving so again my mom was out me and my sister were home alone and we wanted to be good daughters and we were like okay well how about we clean upstairs and when mom gets home we'll surprise her with the upstairs being entirely clean you know we just want we want to do something nice for her my sister was downstairs cooking or like making our lunch and I was upstairs finishing cleaning me and my sister's bathroom. I was literally kneeling over the tub, like, on my knees, scrubbing the outside of the tub. And I just felt eyes on me, right? I have pretty bad anxiety, so most of the time I just chalk it up to that. But this time I was like, Sammy, turn around. Sammy, turn around. Sammy, turn around. So I did. (sighs) Okay, I'll take a picture of where this was because I don't know how to necessarily, like, describe it. But I turned around and there is this chair, but it's not perfectly flush to the wall. So there's a space behind it. And then there's 
a bed like a side table and then like the actual couch you know what i mean like the big couch that everyone can sit on together and there was just this mass like kneeling behind in that little corner between the couch and the chair i was tired and i knew i was tired so i wasn't thinking about it and i was like okay i'm i'm tired it's been a long day but i turn back around and i keep cleaning and then i just hear a noise that i don't think i can ever replicate come from behind me i i turned around and this i i'm i'm going to fucking cry okay the mass that was in the corner was now coming at me. I think I have a drawing of it somewhere. I'm I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna leave it at that. But anyway, I I went back downstairs after, and at this point I was, I I was sobbing. I was uncontrollably sobbing. I was terrified. My again, my sister was downstairs cooking, and she saw my face was red and tear stained. And she just kept asking me over and over, what happened? What happened? What happened? And I just kept shaking my head. And I I felt like I literally couldn't speak. And she was like, draw it. So I drew it. It was genuinely the probably most scary experience I've had. But it, it was genuinely fucking... It was awful. It was awful. It was awful. And from there, things just really revved up and it hasn't stopped since there have been moments and weeks at a time where things have really died down but especially around this time things are really loud in this house and i don't know if you guys know what i mean by loud some of you do probably but it's just like a constant it's just it's constant it's a there's never a moment where this house is completely quiet if that makes any sense i have a lot more stories and i might make a part two before hello um i might make a part two before halloween i that the last one i told just really i feel like i need to stop talking about it just for a few days because i genuinely feel sick to my stomach and i know when you feel sick to your stomach about ghost or poltergeist whatever related things you need to stop talking about it and stop feeding into it thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys probably next week